North Korea's military says it's now officially authorized to wage a nuclear attack against the U.S. to counter what it calls Washington's aggression. Pyongyang warns an explosion is imminent and war could break out today or tomorrow. South Korean-based journalist Joseph Kim has more now on the latest in a series of threats there. We see that they use words like the attack has been cleared or the attack has been authorized. As well as the beginning of the warning, they say, we formally inform Washington. So we see that this rhetoric has actually been repeated by North Korea. And North Korea has used this in a way to actually say, we want to start dialogue. It's a lag period which Pyongyang uses into uh, getting Washington to come and perhaps get on the dialogue table. We keep hearing from other people, such as Secretary General Pang Moon or uh, Secretary, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry, that dialogue is the next step. While both uh, North Korea and the United States seem to be interested in dialogue, it doesn't seem that either side are wanting to back down. Now, with April 15th, in, in April 15th, it is going to be North Korea's founding father, Kim Sung, uh, Kim Sung Il's birthday. And we've seen last year that they did their first satellite launch attempt. So I can, I predict, and I think, as well as many experts, they say that something might happen in mid-April. Whether that will be an attack or whether that will be a celebration and easing of the tensions, we aren't quite sure yet. But it can be seen that historically they've done celebrations to mark, uh, to mark certain things to happen. Whether it was the anniversary of Kim Jong Un's death, that was the third uh, nuclear test. So we can see that something will probably happen in the next week or so. So Pyongyang's latest warning came after the Pentagon announced the deployment of a missile defense system in Guam to prepare against a possible attack. But while any assault is deemed highly unlikely in the U.S., many are questioning whether Washington's actions are proportionate to North Korea's war rhetoric. Artis Genetrichan now explains. To North Korea's bellicose threats, Washington responds with an even more intense buildup of military power in the region. To that, North Korea responds with even more threats. Even though Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel called North Korea real and clear danger, the White House says they haven't seen any large-scale movements from North Korean military forces, suggesting that it may be just rhetoric. But while North Korea talks, Washington acts. Apart from F-22 fighter jets and other bombers that it sent to the region for the ongoing military exercises with South Korea, the Pentagon is now deploying an advanced missile defense system to Guam. Guam hosts a major U.S. military base in Asia. North Korea and the North Korean army has announced that it has the final approval for a nuclear attack on the U.S. As they tell us, North Korean rockets can't really reach uh, the U.S. mainland, but they can potentially attack U.S. bases in the region. There are 28,000 U.S. troops just across the border in South Korea. So could we see the worst nuclear standoff since the Cuban Missile Crisis between the Soviet Union and the U.S. Even though the rhetoric is probably as hostile as it's ever been, no one really believes that North Korea is actually going to carry out an attack. North Korea itself knows that if it did an attack, if it attacked the United States, it would be committing national suicide. The United States would re retaliate in a tremendous fashion. North Korea does not want to commit suicide. I believe North Korea is doing all this so it can get to a point to actually negotiate some kind of peace agreement with the United States. In the U.S. media, too, you have uh, all pundits basically saying the same thing, that North Korea is not going to strike because they know it's a suicide, that they want to reach some kind of a deal with Washington, but they're not going to get it. You have former officials, experts all saying, that. But with all this war talk from North Korea and with U.S. military buildup in the region, some say all it may take is for one of the sides to snap or some kind of a mistake before everything spirals out of control. In Washington, I'm Ganesh Chekhan.